you are Jehovah, you are and I worship you. you, worship you. you are Jehovah, you are and I glorify you. There is no other, no other God like you. Like you. Like you. You're here. I'll oh, sing it again. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. And I worship you. Yes. You are Jehovah. And I glorify you. There is no other, no other God like you. You're here. I am lifted up your name. Be praised. Oh, you are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. And I worship you. Yes. You are Jehovah. And I glorify you. There is no other. No other God like you. Your name. Be praised. Oh, sing it again. You are Jehovah. You are, you are Jehovah, and I worship you, yes. Worship you. You, are you are Jehovah, and I glorify you. No there is no other, no other God like you. Your name be great. Oh, I am, I am, I am, I am. which was and is and is to come. Up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus. Here come to lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up your name, your name. Be praised. And is to come, you're the lion, you're the lamb, thy king to come, thy will be done. Your train fills this temple, for you are high and lifted up your name. Come on, one more time. Lift up the name, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up your name. Your name. Your name be praised, Lord. Your name be praised. Let you glorify. tonight, Lord. You're worthy to be exalted, God. Yes, Lord, we bless your holy name. Oh,
give him praise in this place tonight. He's worth
He is the great God. Amen. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's so good to be with you tonight and uh, feel His presence. Amen. Yeah. I feel Him already here, and I believe that He's going to move in a special way tonight. Praise God. We're going to receive the evening offering tonight, and we just ask you to give. You know, in all of my life, since I've been serving the Lord, we've tithed and we've never been in want. We've never been in need because God supplies every need according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. And I, we just give our little small part, but he gives a great big blessing and extends what he leaves to us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight for this privilege to give, and we know that you are the great God. You are the God of gods and the Lord of lords and the King of kings. We ask you to bless every gift and every giver tonight, shaken down, running over. Lord, we will not fail to praise you and thank you for it, for we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just sing this together tonight? I'm coming back to the heart of worship Cause it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it When it's all about you It's all about you I'll sing it one more time I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it because it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. How many of you are thankful it's all about him tonight? Amen. Amen. Also, too, tonight, I, I don't get a, a lot of opportunity to do this, but I just want to say how blessed we are to have such an awesome praise and worship team. Amen. We are blessed. You don't get that everywhere you go, I promise. I've been in a lot of churches, and the freedom that we have here and the talent that we have here, and most importantly, the worship that we have here is incredible. It's incredible. I want to, if I say something, you promise not to get mad at me? A lot of laughs. No one, <laughs> no one said no. That scares me. I'm going to ask if it's okay. Would you mind moving forward tonight? All right, just come on, on up here. Come on up here, okay? I know, I know you're in your seat that you love so much and uh, that you love being in it, but just come on up here. And I've got a reason for you to come up here, I promise, okay? I'm not just trying to make you move. And uh, I do see that we're missing a lot tonight. I guess Pastor said that I was speaking, and I've already scared a lot of people off, and I hadn't even started yet. So we are in for a treat tonight. I appreciate you coming up here. I really do. And uh, before we get started tonight, I just want to say what an honor and privilege it is to have this opportunity. Pastor and I have been talking for a while uh, about doing a series on worship uh, because worship is what we were created to do. It's our purpose, right? And so, so we've been talking about doing this for a while because worship seems simple. But how I many you know sometimes things that seem so simple can be really complicated or people make it complicated? Let's put it that way. And... Uh, and the church has, has spent thousands of years now, 2,000 years, making worship complicated. And in the midst of that, then we've missed out on a lot of things that worship really is. And so I, I, I'm just excited about this opportunity. And uh, first off, before we do that, though, I just want us to pray. Uh, right now, Pastor and Bo is with him there in Honduras, and they've been talking the last few days and finishing up the details for this building that we're fixing to sign off on. Think, is that awesome? A $6 million building that is being given to us to make impact for ministry. Come on, that deserves praise. God is an awesome God. And every time I think about that, I just think there is nothing impossible for God. Just awesome. 
So as we pray, let's let's pray over Pastor and and uh, Bo and and those others that are there with them. That God would keep them safe and that everything would be finalized and finished smoothly. And uh, I know there's been some things trying to come and attack against what they're doing, but we know that God is greater. And so we're just going to pray over that. And then let's also just pray over the Word tonight, if we will. Father, we just come before you. We thank you for tonight, Lord. We thank for the opportunity and the privilege to be in this house tonight. Lord, I thank you for your presence that has been here, Father, so strongly. I thank you for the atmosphere that is here tonight. Lord, I just thank you for who you are in our lives, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would touch the word as it goes forth tonight, Father. Lord, I am just but a man, Lord, but you are God, Lord, and it is your words that bring life. It is your words, Father, that bring strength and encouragement, Lord, and and, uh, move upon our lives, Lord. And Lord, tonight I pray that you would just touch Pastor and Bo and those others that are there, Father, finalizing up this gift that you have given, Lord. Lord, it has been your doing, Father, and we don't question that, Father. And so we just pray that everything would go smoothly, Father, everything would be finalized quickly, Lord, and we just give you honor and praise. We ask you to keep them safe, Father, as they're there, and keep them safe as they come back. And Lord, I pray that tonight your word would go forth, Father, and lives would be touched and changed forever, Lord. Let us be, Father, impact and challenge tonight. We just give you praise. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Tonight I want to talk to you. I'm not going to share anything that is just crazy deep or crazy rhema word. Um, I'm just going to share from my heart of what God's been placing on my heart. Pastor started on last Wednesday speaking on the series called The Issue of Worship. And, uh, and I want to talk to you guys. I, I really want to come down there very badly, but I know they're videotaping, so I'll stay up here so they can do that. Um, but, uh, but I want to, over the next couple of Wednesday nights, break down some of the, the issues of worship. And uh, tonight I want to start with talking about the issue of unity. I mean, you guys know that there is a big issue in the church of unity. Uh, It's been around for a long time. Satan's been working hard to do that. And uh, I want to start, like I said, this isn't going to be anything complicated, maybe nothing nothing new to you tonight. But sometimes we got to get back to the basics. You know, sometimes we got to get back to the things that we still haven't learned to apply yet in our life. I heard a story uh, a couple of years ago that I thought was pretty funny. There was a church, and they were looking uh, for a new pastor. Their pastor had left, and uh, so they brought in a couple of people. The first guy came, and he spoke that Sunday, and he did a good job. It was okay, but they thought, nah, he's not the guy for us. And so the next Sunday, another pastor came, and he also spoke well. But they just, they just, just, it just wasn't good enough for them, so to speak, as a church. And The third Sunday, a pastor came, and, man, he just tore it up. I mean, he just ripped the place to shreds, and the people loved it, and the people were just, were just going nuts while he was there preaching. So they thought, man, this is the guy for us. So they took a vote, and unanimously he got the vote to come be the pastor at their church. So he came the first Sunday, and the weirdest thing happened. He preached the exact same sermon that he preached the first time he was there. And uh, people thought, man, that's a little strange. They thought, you know, maybe he's nervous. He forgot he preached that. And and, uh, so they didn't say anything. The next Sunday rolls around, he preached the same sermon again. And uh, then they started getting a little nervous. They started thinking, my Lord, this guy doesn't know any other sermons. They just let it go. The next Sunday, he got up there. He preached the same sermon again. This is now the fourth time they preached the same sermon. So the pastor's council was a little worried about this. And uh, they got together and said, we're going to meet with him. So they met with him. And they said, you know, we loved your preaching that first Sunday. And that word you preached was awesome. But we've heard it four times now. Can't you preach anything else? And he said, oh, absolutely I can. He said, but you haven't applied what I preached the first time. So I'm going to pre- preach it until you get it right. Amen? And sometimes that's, that's just the truth. That's the way it is in church. We hear a good word, and we know how to apply it, but we don't apply it. We know how we're supposed to live, but are we living that way? It's the basics. We're supposed to love everyone, but do we love everyone? We're supposed to worship him no matter what we're going through, but do we do it? It's the basics. And so tonight I just want to talk to you for a little bit. I'm not going to be real, real long, but I want to talk to you about issue of unity the other thing is when you're in school if you don't know two plus two what happens you fail right and you keep failing until you get it right and in church sometimes we just move on even though we keep failing the other stuff we try to move on into something new and so tonight I want to talk to you about this issue of unity 
We know that the word unity is talked about a lot in God's word. And we know that there's a number of great events that occur when unity is brought into play throughout the word. And I want to start with one of my favorite scriptures tonight. I love this scripture, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, and it should be up there for you tonight. It says this, it says, The priest then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regardless of their divisions. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, Jeduthun, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. The trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singers raised their voices and praised the Lord and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud, and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. And that last part is why that's one of my favorite scriptures, because every time I step foot on this stage and lead worship, that's my desire. For the glory of the Lord to fill the house. Not because of me, but because of just giving him the honor that he's worthy of. Not being able to do anything because the glory of the Lord is so strong. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine coming in here and worshiping and the glory of God being so strong you don't know what to do? You don't know how to respond? Let me ask this. Have you ever experienced that? I've had moments in my life where there's been that kind of glory in the room. But not only did they experience and feel that, it was tangible. They could see the glory of God. It was like a cloud in the room. That's awesome. Do we desire that, guys? Do we desire that type of glory? I want to, I want to relook at the scripture. If you can throw it back up there, uh, just start at the beginning there. I don't know if you can throw it back up there on verse 11. If you can't, that's all right. All right. Uh, but let's walk through this really quick, okay? Start with verse 11. The priest then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves regards to the vision. Right there, we see unity. Unity that comes because they have sanctified themselves. Now let's go on to verse 12. All the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, Heman, and Jedethon, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. What do you see there? Unity? Okay, they're all together doing their part. And then they were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. There I see unity. In verse 13, the trumpeters and musicians joined in unison to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Unity. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, the singer raised their voice and praised the Lord and sang, He is good. His love endures forever. Unity. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud, and the priests could not perform the service because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. The thing that I see in there over and over is unity. There was unity that took place for the glory of the Lord to be filled in that. And I want, to, I want to point out something as well. Everyone that was involved in that was participating in it, correct? Everybody was doing something. It, there wasn't another verse in there somewhere that said, and the Hittites were over on the north just standing there watching. Okay, that was, that's not in there. That's not in my word anywhere. But anyway, my point is worship is action. It requires action to worship. Worship is not something that just happens from you just sitting there. It requires action. If I worship something, it means I am taking some type of action towards what it is I worship. And the problem that I see so much in today's church is the church, and they, this has grown tremendously over the last few years, is the church has created this uh, concert mentality. And they've created this mentality of people to where it's become a spectator event rather than a participatory event. And some people where they'll be spectators, but they'll also be participators, but only when it feels right, or only when they sing the song that moves me, or only when uh, I'm having a good day. 
people get comfortable with watching the worship that when it feels right or they get an emotional feeling welling up in them, then all of a sudden they respond. And it's become dangerous, dangerous ground, dangerous ground that we're at. I want you to think about that. Think about that. I will respond when I feel like it. Put that in, put that in context of other activities, and let's see how that works out, okay? So let's, let's take a football team, all right? And let's say that the defensive lineman, he's in the game. He's down, he's ready to go, and then all of a sudden he's just like, you know what, I don't really feel like being a defensive right now. And all of a sudden the play goes forth, all right? They, they start the play, and he just stands there. What's going to come out of that? Nothing too good, right? <laughs> all right, what, what, what about, let's say someone, let's say there's a nurse, and she's in the operating room, and uh, it's her job to help hand all of the utensils to the doctor, all the tools that are needed to perform this surgery that's important. And all of a sudden, he starts calling out the things that he needs. And she's like, you know what? I'm really not feeling it right now. I'm just going to stand here, and uh, when I feel it, I'll do it. Wouldn't end up too well, would it? I wonder how the team would feel about that player that just decided he's going to stand there. I wonder how the coach would feel uh, about that person. I'm sure that he would not be on the team any longer. But the point is, is we do this all the time in church. We cause the same exact thing in church and we don't even realize it. Because we are holding up a moving force that can't function correctly because a piece is missing. An arm isn't moving, a leg isn't working, an ear isn't hearing. Does this sound familiar to you? This sound like something, you know, 1 Corinthians 12, I'm not going to read through it all tonight. But it talks about being the body. We are the body of Christ. And we have to function together. And when one part is missing, then we are handicapped because we cannot function properly. And it's become dangerous ground, and I can assure you, without a doubt that Satan is okay with this mentality that has been created in our churches. Although the church should be a safe place for people to come, it shouldn't always be a comfortable place to be. Because we have gotten so comfortable with the Holy Spirit and so buddy-buddy with Him, quote-unquote, that there's no reverence anymore for when He's moving. Because a lot of times we, we anticipate or put together a move of God with how we're feeling. But I can assure you that the Holy Spirit is always moving. It says in His Word, where two or more are gathered, I am there in the midst of them. And so the moment we walk in this place, He is moving. But do we recognize it? Or are we waiting for that moment? It doesn't have to be, oh, when that third song hits and they bring the lights down, oh, that, oh the Spirit is now moving in this place. Glory to God. Now, that's not the way it is. He is moving always, always. And you say, well, what about when I'm by myself? You know, because it says in His Word there were two or three. Well, do you realize when you have Christ in you, then there's always two of you? So when you have the Holy Spirit in you, then there's always two or three of you right there. And so he's always moving and working. And I don't want to get, I don't want to get too far off track tonight, but with, with what I'm saying there is we, we have got to stop worshiping God based on how we feel and worship God based on who he is, period, period, period. We've, we've, we've lost that somewhere along the way. I've, I've lost that. I've had my moments where I've lost that. And then I look in the scriptures and I see people that still worshipped him while in prison. And I look at people that still worshipped him while in caves and running from the enemy but still worshipping God. But yet we come in and can't worship because it's not our favorite song or because it, it feels uncomfortable because the temperature's not right. When we when we make it about us, there's disunity already. But here's here's what scares me about it. When we make it about us, you know, it's one thing for me to have disunity with Brother Richard. It's not right. We need to get it right. That's one thing. Or to have it with a family member or friend. But when we make worship about us, then there's disunity with the Holy Spirit. 
So we are creating an atmosphere of disunity with the Spirit of God. And that is what withholds the Spirit from moving freely in the house. It's not that He can't, but it's that He won't because we have a spirit of disunity going on because we've gotten too focused on us rather than it being about God. We see this happen all the time. We see prayer removed from schools. We see abortions being legalized, and every year that gets closer to full term that they're being legalized. See gay, lesbian, marriage. See all these things that are taking place. And the reality is it's just a small handful that's fighting for it. It's not the majority, not even close. The numbers show that it's not even close to the majority. So my question is, why are they winning? Unity. If a small handful of people that are doing everything against what is God's word can win because of unity, think of what the church could do if we would get in unity together. There's power in unity. There's a tremendous power in a church that worships together in unity. You, you, uh, let me just give an example. Uh, how many of you were here at the revival last week? Awesome, awesome atmosphere, amen? Awesome presence of God. Powerful, powerful services. I can tell you those, the, the power of those services was not because... Uh, not because Pastor Andre Von Ziel was here. It was not because we did worship any differently. It was here because people came with an expectancy. And a lot of times we see that happen. We see things, a really great example, uh, maybe you maybe went to Winterfest when you were younger, and you go, and man, it's just the awesomest thing ever. But the reason it's awesome is because there's an expectancy. And then you come back to church, and it's just church as usual because there's been a loss of expectancy for God to show up. And so we'll see mighty moves of God in special services like revival because the people that come, because that's out of the norm, so to speak, because not everyone goes to church every Monday night or Tuesday night, they come because they're hungry for more of God and because they're desperate because they want to see more of God in their life. And because of that, then there is a different atmosphere that takes place. But we can experience that atmosphere every single time we come in here, and we can do that with having a spirit of unity in our worship. When you get people together in a room with that mentality, then you get a spirit of unity where God is the focus. And through that freedom, then focus is pulled away from man and away from our own desires and allows the spirit to work freely in the house. And so I want, I want you to say this with me tonight. There is power in unity. Come on, say it. Power in unity. Say it one more time like you mean it. There is power in unity. Amen. Tonight I want to do something really crazy as my phone goes off, so giving me notifications. Uh, I, I'm going to ask, let's see how many we got. I think we can make this work. I'm going to ask everyone to, to get out of your seat and then come up on the stage for a moment, okay? I'm not going to do anything weird or crazy, so, but just come on up here, all right? We're, we're going to practice our participation and not just be a spectator. Of, uh, of tonight's service. You're going to be involved, all right? Uh, I, I would like, let's get, uh, let's see. Let's get eight of you to make a circle right here. and Make a circle, eight of you. It don't matter who, who but uh, just eight of you. Come on up here. One, two, let's count, let's count. Come on in, come on in. All right. All right, good. We're getting there. If y'all can make an egg, that's fine too. Just any type of shape that can be completed, that's okay, all right? All right, good. I want you guys to hold hands, if you will. I want to show you something that's important with unity. Now, you guys are not in unity, okay? All of you standing out here, y'all are awful, terrible people because y'all are not in unity with what is going on, all right? I'm just messing with you, all right? Um, actually, let's let's do this real quick. Everyone, get in the circle. Try and grab hands and make this thing huge. Let's do it. All right. Sorry, I'm messing you guys up. Come on in here, brother Joe. Come on in. Come on in. All right. That is a very good. That's an amoeba. All right. That works though. 
All right. Now, I know this is different, okay? I know this is, you're kind of like, what in the world's going on, all right? But that's okay. Once again, we got to get out of our comfort zone in church of this is how things should be. And that's why I wanted you to move out of your seat. It wasn't me trying to be whatever, but so often we just come in, we're so comfortable with our place, and this is where we sit. And I, but just think about it. we got to get out of our comfort zone. We are the body of Christ. We should want to sit together, amen? We should want to fellowship together versus I'm going to come in, go sit in my corner over here. I'll see you all way over there, okay? But here's why I, I want you to do this, all right? Here's what I want to show you. This is, this is proof of the power of unity. Because right now, all of you are unified, okay? You're proving that by holding your hands together. And, and it, it talks about that even in Scripture, you know, about when hands come together. Um, and so, so right now, you're in unity. And I am Satan. All right? <laughs> good. That's good. Thanks. It's pray. But see, here's the thing. Right now, I can try all I want. I can't get to any of you because you're in unity. None of you. I can't get through anywhere. It's impossible. But all it takes is one person being in disunity. I'll let go. Yeah, please. Let go. Yeah. One person in disunity, now I can get to any one of you. I can go right to you. Because someone broke the circle of unity. And that's what happens in services. We come in and there's someone in disunity, and it opens the doorway for all hell to come in and to cause distraction and to cause confusion and to draw people out of being focused on God. Now, now let's go back to our small circle and, uh, and everyone else being in disunity. <laughs> so. That's fine. I don't have to be perfect. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you guys saw what happened, right? When you're in unity. I can't get to any of you. I can't get to a single one of you. But all of you, you're free game now. All right? Every single one of you, I can come to you and get at you all I want. So what happens? You've got a small group of people in unity. Satan can't get to them. So people outside of the unity circle all of a sudden say, I want what they got because I'm getting attacked. And I see they're just, they're just doing awesome. But my life's just to live in hell. And so all of a sudden, people start joining in to the circle. You guys go ahead and just start grabbing in. <laughs> oh, all right. Don't let me in, all right? But come on, I want to be a part of the group, guys. Come on, I want to get in. Actually, that wasn't planned, but... Satan will do that as well, try to slip in in such a non-demanding way. Um, my point is, though, is this, is when we have a group and an atmosphere of unity, people will want to get to be a part of it because they want to be in the freedom that we're experiencing. And so you'll have people that will be drawn to this church because they say, they have something and I want it. And when we have a, a spirit of disunity in the church, then Satan is just running rampant, doing whatever he so pleases because there's abilities to get in. There's doorways to get in and attack, okay? I want you guys to, you can go be seated. I appreciate you coming up here. <laughs> no, no, it's not true. It, it could be, though, from the enemy, yes. Thank you guys so much.
So there's, there's power in unity, right? Just real quick, I want to take a look at 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. As you've heard, it says this. It says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and in thought. And what I love is, is if you go to the New Living Translation, this is the way it says it in there. I really love this. It says, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no divisions in the church. Rather, be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. What's our purpose? Worship. That's how we were created, to worship. And we, also, we, we often hear the words from pastor or from me or from other places that worship is contagious. And it definitely is. But I want to tell you something else that's contagious, unity. Unity is contagious because when there's a spirit of unity, then there is a hedge of protection of God over those people where the enemy can't attack. And people will desire to get in that circle so that they can be safe as well. We have a great church. We have great people. Stacey and I have been blessed and honored to be here at the Tabernacle. We, we love it here. You are our family. And, uh, and we have had no issues once since we've been here. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen? Come on now. That's awesome, okay? So maybe some of you don't ever go to church or never been in ministry, but that's awesome, okay? So right there in and of itself, we're way ahead of the game, all right? <laughs> we're doing good here at the Tabernacle of Praise. So we're probably ahead of 98% of churches right there alone. But still, we don't have unity. We're working on it, but we don't have it. Because when there's unity, all will worship, all will praise, all will glorify his name. Because in his word it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And so unless you're dead here in the sanctuary, then you should be praising him. Because that's a spirit of unity. It's a spirit of God's word calling us to that. And when a spirit of unity like that comes upon the house, then the glory of the Lord will fill the house as a cloud. And we won't be able to contain ourselves. We won't be able to control ourselves. We won't know what to do because there's a spirit of unity, and that spirit of unity has drawn the glory of God into this place in a mighty way. And so tonight, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you guys. I want to challenge myself. Let's be a part of the circle. I'll be someone just hanging out. And I, and I know the whole church isn't here tonight, and so, so we might be a small circle. And I know there's many that would join in on the circle if they were here tonight. But let's be a part of the circle. Let's be a leader in worship and a leader in unity. Being a worship leader for the past 12 years, then there's something that I've learned greatly, and that is this. Some of the best worship leaders and worship team members will never set foot on the stage. They're out there. They're in the pews. I've watched people that, that just worship with all they have within them, and they are just they could be in that back corner. They're worshiping God with all of them. They're leading people around them into worship because of their worship. You are a worship leader, and you have the ability to lead those around you. Not just worship, but become a part of the circle of unity where the enemy can't get in and the center becomes a place for the throne of God. That's, what I, that's the best part about this circle. When we build unity, we create a place for the throne of God to come and for God to sit at that throne and for us to worship at his feet. And guess what? We're in unity, so Satan can't get in anywhere to interrupt the worship unto our king. I want you guys to stand tonight, if you will, and uh, I, I appreciate you taking time to listen. I hope I haven't bored you to death, but this is just what's been on my heart tonight. Tonight, I, I, I asked you to move forward, like I said, not just being whatever, but because we need unity. 
we come into church, and I'm I'm guilty as any one of us, but we come into church and we so many times beeline it straight to our spot and walk right by people we've never once said hello to. We've never shook their hand. We've never we don't know their name. We've never talked to them. They're our family. We're the body of Christ. You know, in his word, it, it says that the early church got together daily and fellowshiped and broke bread together. Now, as far as I know of, that wasn't required back then. And so if it wasn't required, people would not do it because they had to. They would do it because they want to. And that's the way the body of Christ should be. We should come in and fellowship and get close-knit together and get tight together. It doesn't matter what generation you are. It doesn't matter what uh, denomination that comes in. It doesn't matter any of that. None of it matters. We should become close together as the body of Christ. And I just want you tonight, I, I challenge you, step out of your comfort zone. You know, where you sit's fine. I'm not saying that that's a terrible place or anything like that. But, but get out of your seat every once in a while. Move somewhere different. Go find someone that you haven't talked to. Because they're your, they're your family. And it's easy to get comfortable sitting in the spot you've always wanted to sit, but there's a sense of urgency of what is taking place in the spirit realm now. Don't just move up a few rows and do nothing, but move up and lead people into worship. Move up out of your pew and be a leader. Let the people behind you see you worshiping your God. You're not putting on a show for them. The same as we stand up here. We're not putting on entertainment. We don't act like this because we're just trying to lead you somewhere. We are worshiping our God. This is me and him time, okay? I might say some things to try and, uh, try and you know, speak what God is doing at the moment or what he's saying in my heart, but it's not, it's not a show for people to watch and for people to receive. It's a show to give him glory and honor and praise and so so I want to challenge you move up a few rows because also too anyone that can get a hold of this mentality all of a sudden up front we have this big unity circle going on and all of a sudden people are saying I want to get up there I want to get and be a part of that I want to get into what God is doing and some may sit comfortable for a while but eventually they'll see the urgency and start getting that feeling like being the only one who wanted to play baseball you guys are saying, where are you going with that? Just real quick, do you remember being a kid and just kind of an example, maybe you wanted to play baseball, but there was like 12 others and they wanted to play, uh, they wanted to play kickball. What did you do? You didn't argue with them. You didn't say, well, I want to play baseball. I'm just going to sit down. No, there were 12 of them want to play kickball. You're the only one who to play baseball. So you joined them and went and played kickball. And it's the same thing. There's power in unity, and there's strength in numbers. And when we're unified and we begin to grow in things and we build a church that is built upon not just worship but is built upon unity, and people want to be a part of that. And when we accomplish that, not only have we shifted the culture of our church, but we have shifted a commonality of most every church that I've ever been in. Because if we can create an atmosphere of leading people into worship as a church, and create an atmosphere of unity as a church, then what will happen is instead of people getting to church early so they can get a seat on the back pew, they'll have to get to church early so they can get a seat on the front pew. And that's the way church should be. I'm not sure where it's come that we've gotten afraid of this area, but this is the area we come to worship God. This is an area we come to say, God, here I am desperate for you. Here I am longing for more of you. There's nothing, this is just a physical area. There's nothing really special in terms of the physical. But in the spiritual, what you're doing is making a statement saying, God, I'm stepping out because I want to get closer to you. And I'm not satisfied with just being where I'm at. I want to get closer. And so I want to challenge you tonight. Step out. Step up as we've been talking about. Let's, let's move this thing to the front. Let's move this train to the front. And let's join together in worship and get people desperate to worship God and receive more of Him. Amen? And with that will come the glory of the Lord, which will fill this house, and people will not have any clue what to do because the presence of God will be so strong.
Amen. Father, we come before you. We thank you for tonight, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word tonight. Father, what an honor and privilege it's been. And Lord, I pray that we would just not shove under the rug the simple things, Father, that you've called us to. Lord, it's it's great, Father, to, to get the deeper things and to get the deep word and to get the rhema word sometimes, Lord. But Lord, when we completely are missing the most simplistic things that you've called us to, to worship, Lord, to worship you, not us, to worship you and to make it all about you, or to come together in one accord, Lord, in unity, Father, as a body. Lord, I pray that we would just, Father, shift those things, Father, as a church, Father. For you're looking for, you are coming back for a spotless bride, Lord. And I, I haven't seen that anywhere. And I don't know where it's at, but I know it's coming because it's in your word, Father. A spotless bride, Lord. And Lord, we can take action towards being that spotless bride. Lord, I just thank you for it tonight, Father. We give you glory and honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask if we will, uh, just if you will, just get out of your seat if you don't mind and come up to the altar. and uh, They're going to play this song. And let's just take a few moments to worship God and to give Him our hearts and to just lay everything at His feet tonight. Amen? Go ahead and play that if you will. Hopefully it will play. I just realized things are muted, I think. Alright guys, don't worry about it. We'll just worship together. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment.
moment I'm away. tonight in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that your prayer? Amen. Not just words, your prayer. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord. Lord, have your way in me. We love you guys. And uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Please come. Please come ready. Come ready to lead people in worship with your worship. And let's have a spirit of unity. I promise you right now, if every single one of us that's in this room right now will come with, a, with an expectancy, a spirit of unity, and a heart of worship, there will be a different atmosphere in this place on Sunday. Amen. We love you. Continue to pray for Pastor and Bo and them as they travel back. And uh, we'll see you on Sunday.